Hi everyone, Chris Ng here, and I'm here today to talk about labor curves. This is an adjunct video for week 16, uh, tutorial 6, the CBL case. And during that case, you're asked to follow um, a patient through a normal labor and delivery. So this is a common question I anticipate getting because during your reading, you may have come upon two different labor curves, Friedman's curves, as well as a different curve called Zhang curves. And we're going to come and talk about that. Just to be absolutely clear, this is not testable right now. So stick with what you're learning in your CBL case. But I want to make sure you guys are sort of learning the most up-to-date information as explains sort of why we're making those decisions. So just taking a step back, talking about Friedman's curves. Friedman's curves have really defined the way we manage labor and delivery for decades. Um, Friedman published a study in 1954, and basically it followed a whole bunch of random patients who were either spontaneous or induced, they were breech in their vertex, uh, and they followed them through labor. And what you've learned is about a series of numbers uh, in terms of how fast we expect labor to actually happen. This was an, a much older study, so this was done in 1954, and this is sort of before the advent of epidurals, uh, and certainly before the advent of evidence-based medicine. Again, you may, you may scoff at that, but honestly, all this stuff is actually rather new. So from his work, he basically found that as soon as people reached the, that active phase of labor, everything started skyrocketing pretty quickly. And when you actually look at the numbers, he, they described a protracted labor rate. So this is the bottom fifth percentile of no leprous being first-time mumps, yeah, progressing about 1.2 centimeters an hour, and people who've had a previous vaginal delivery or delivery progressing at 1.5 centimeters an hour. And this is actually the bottom fifth percentile. On average, people progress 2 centimeters for the people having their first, time, first baby, and 3 centimeters having uh, their, their second or third baby. So the problem with that is that this is a fairly old study. And what happened was, is a group out of the States led by Zhang in 2010 uh, called the Consortium of Safe Labor actually published a new multi-center retrospective cohort study. So this is actually done out of the US involving 62,000 patients. And their goal was really to develop contemporary labor curves. And this is the curve that they came up with. Just talking a little bit about the curves here, um, the main thing that we're gonna highlight for you is that there's a couple key findings to take away. One is that previously you've learned that active labor of first stage starts at four centimeters. And that may not actually be correct. That when we take a look is that until people hit about six centimeters, that's when we start seeing that rapid rise. Before six centimeters, things can actually take a fair bit of time longer. Second thing is that people progressed a heck of a lot slower. On average, people progress between, for first time mumps, between 0.5 to 0.7 centimeters an hour. And for people who've had previous babies, it's from 0.5 to 1.3. And that's a far cry from the two centimeter and three centimeter hours, respectively, from Friedman's curves. Um, and in fact, you can see this when we actually overlap the curves here. So you can see that the bottom two dashed lines are Friedman's curves. And you can see that as soon as they hit that four centimeter mark, you see this rapid skyrocketing upwards till they reach full dilation in a matter of a couple hours. Whereas Zhang's curves showed, again, really slow gradual progress until it hits about six centimeters, and then we start seeing that rise upwards. So why are we talking about this? So the ACOG, which is the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, came up with a guideline in 2014 talking about how can we have the safe prevention of primary cesarean section? Because if we can stop the first C-section, we can often stop the second and third C-sections. And they have really jumped on to this study by Zhang. And basically say, you know, look, we really shouldn't say that the latent first stage, there's no time limit for that. We used to say, hey, look, once you pass 20 hours, you're done. We just section you. Or, you know, once you pass 14, if you've had a previous baby, you were done. But if you actually talk to people who've actually given birth, they often comment on being in labor for days. And it's not like they're actually in active labor for days. They're actually in that latent phase. And again, it takes some time. We don't, the, the actual latent phase can take quite a bit of time. So there is no absolute time limit anymore. Second thing is that we've also learned that just slow progressive labor is sufficient. This is not a race. As long as people are making slow, steady progress, that is fine. Previously, we would actually just, as soon as you were not meeting that, that sort of 1.2 centimeters an hour, after four hours, you were done. We would section you. So, so that's sort of the changes that have come because of this new study. 
Um, and finally, six centimeters really should be the threshold for active phase of labor. Um, many, many sites are now espousing that six is the new four, that we do not admit people until they've reached six centimeters. We know that if we admit patients too early in the labor process, before they hit active labor, they tend to get more interventions, because again, we get itchy, we get bored, so we say, hey, look, you haven't progressed for six hours, let's go break your waters, let's do some interventions, let's start some oxytocin. So really, before six centimeters, the thresholds of active phase of progress should not be applied. So that's where a lot of this has come from. So the question is, is that why are we still teaching you in, in 2020? Why are we still teaching you about Friedman? Because the honest answer is we haven't fully adapted yet. This is our most recent SOGC guideline on management of spontaneous labor at term in healthy women, published in 2016. And if you take a look at their definitions of labor, the active phase really is when they reach four centimeters of dilation or greater, or four, four to five in Paris women. So, so that's kind of frustrating. Why is that? So basically, their, their reasoning is that, look, we've used these definitions for decades, and so much of our research and so much of our management is based upon these definitions. Let's wait until we see newer studies comparing management based upon the two labor curves before we sort of move forward, whereas the American college has decided to move forward a little bit more wholeheartedly. And again, you're, you're, you're listening to me, and you're like, why the hell does this pedantic crap matter? And the answer is it does. Little changes make a difference. Uh, and this is actually from the same guideline from SOGC. And their statement is, hey, look, they, they looked at one trial that, that basically said, do we, should we be examining patients and acting every two hours or every four hours? And what they're able to show is that we know when we use a four centimeter action line, the C-section rate was 70% lower in the four hour action line. That's a huge decrease. If I had an intervention I could sell you that would decrease your chance of C-section by 70%, and that intervention was called patience, that would go for a lot of money. So anyway, so that, that's why definitions actually do make a difference. So anyways, this again is not testable, but this will hopefully provide a little bit of clear understanding of why you're reading and seeing these different labor curves when you're doing your preparation for your CBL case. Okay, well, I hope you're enjoying your CBL, and have a good day.